Hey everybody, it's Chaplain Willette here, and excited to be with you this Sunday, another church day. And if you've ever wondered why professional athletes have chaplains in their life, well, it's because you guys are on a crazy schedule where you don't get a chance to do this on Sunday and come to church and hang out with a bunch of people and just enjoy a little bit of the Word of God and get a little brain away from all the activity that you guys are so inundated in on a daily basis. But, uh, hey, I'm here to give you some scripture today and uh, just love on you guys a little bit. And this passage is super cool. Hope you guys enjoy it. It says Psalm 115.1. Psalm just means song. So the Psalms in the Bible, in the Old Testament of the Bible, just is the song book, if you will. It's kind of like the hymn book for the Jewish people. So Psalm 115.1 says, Not unto us, but to your name be the glory. So not unto us, but to your name be the glory. So the idea is not unto me, but to your name, God's name. And the name of God is kind of mysterious in the Old Testament. Now, in the New Testament, it's revealed that uh, his name is Jesus. And Jesus means um, God is salvation. That's what Jesus means. God is salvation. And so not unto our name, but unto his name be the glory. Now, we got to talk a little bit about glory. Because this is a really cool passage. And, um, and it really helps us in our life in just general practical ways. So think of it this way. If you were to hang out with me and I were to talk about, you know, my wife. And I was just like, man, my wife's awesome. And I grew up with my wife. And I, she actually lived not too far from me, actually four houses down from me. That's true, by the way. And I'll tell you about my wife. And she's, she's wonderful. You know, w she went to a Catholic church right by our house. I would go hang out with her at St. Rosa Lima. Um, I was not a church kid at all, but I would go just hang out with her. And then when she got in junior high, she hung out with me. And super pretty, uh, just this beautiful Latina woman. Uh, just, you know, we grew up together, went to junior high and high school together, um, really just enjoyed a great friendship with her. And that's all we were is just friends. And then when I got into college at the university and uh, out there in uh, SoCal, then, you know, we and we ended up, you know, dating. And man, it's just been an amazing marriage. Been married 28 years, by the way two kids that are big um, we've been empty nesters already for four years can you believe it four years we already have kids out of the house now when I talk that way about my wife what I'm doing is I'm glorifying her so I'm using this term in the Bible glorify and I'm using it I'm glorifying so what do you think glorifying means it means valuing seeing something is beautiful Seeing something as special, as awesome. Now, if you got with me and you said, and, and I said, yeah, um, I, I am married, you know, thanks for asking. And you say, yeah, well, how, what's your wife like? Oh, well, she's like a wife, you know, like, like, like other wives, I guess. You know, she, she, you know, is like a wife. And I say, well, tell me about her, man. Like, what is she, what, do, you know, what do you like about her? Well, you know, what do I, what do I like about my wife? Hmm. Gosh, well, you know, I guess I, I guess I like her because she's just kind of, you know, she kind of does stuff. And, y you know, but if I talk that way, <laughs> and have you ever talked to someone like that about their spouse or someone they like? Or, you know, there's not much glory in that, is there? It sounds like their marriage is a lot of duty, right? Like, this is what we do. But there's not a lot of glory See, something, something is shown to be of worth when it is not just something we do out of duty, but there's something that's of value, like something glorifying in it, something beautiful in it, something exciting in it, something passionate in it. Now we start giving something ultimate value, amazing value. Do you see how that works? 
Where, yeah, uh, I mean, the guy, the second guy I was talking about, I was kind of doing the uh, 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 interpretation of, or, you know, that guy has a duty with his wife. Yeah, you know, I like my wife. She does stuff for me. But it's kind of out of a duty. You know, she's my wife. That's what she's supposed to do, you know. And it shows, sure, a value in her, but not like the first one, right? The first one couldn't stop talking about her. Right. She was awesome. He's got he's got story upon story about times with his wife and how cool she is. And that person shows the value of the spouse, the ultimate worth of the spouse through their excitement, joy, adoration, all those things. And that's how we glorify something or someone. Now, it doesn't need to be just a person. A lot of people glory in, say, their car. You know, they look at the car and they go, man, that thing's awesome. And look at this and look at that. And man, da -da 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 -da, and they trick it out and they glorify their car. They give it its ultimate worth. How? Not just by, by driving it, but by being excited to drive it. By adoring the car. Right? Taking pictures, putting it online, that kind of idea. So I hope you're understanding this idea of now glorification. We all do it, by the way. Human beings are wired. This is weird, but we're wired with a, a tendency to worship. And now I'm using another word, worship. But the reason why I'm wor using the word worship is because now you'll see how it's tied in to glorification. The idea of worship is worth-ship. Worth. It's worth something. So we put value in it. How do I put value in something? I glorify it, right? I invest in it. I'm excited about it. I adore it. And it shows in my talking, how um, animated we are. It shows when I'm at a game and something happens and everybody gets off their butt and they start screaming, whoa, right? Do you see something? Everybody is showing the worth of something that was done because what was done on the ice, on the court, on the pitch, on the baseball field, it was glory. It was awesome. That's what we say. See, we give glory to things that we see that are extraordinarily awesome. Something that is cool. Something that is different. Something that is unique. Something that happens that we don't see every day. Something that seems to pop out of the mundane and the normal. That's what we go is awesome. So this passage, Psalm 115.1 says, Not unto us, but to your name be the glory. So not unto me. God is the unique one. He is the incredible one. When I look around and see the creation and see what he's done, I go, wow, dude, God must be intricate. He must be an amazing mathematician because everything is so precise, Right? Everything is so exact. There's laws that are constantly happening that are on us all the time. Not only on us, outside of us that are there. The, the precision of the planets, the precision of everything, all natural world that's outside of us as human beings, but also within our bodies. There is an amazing intricacy of, of cellular stuff going on, right? Uh, fusions taking place all the time. Things are reverberating all the time in perfect harmony, going and doing its thing. Not God it must be amazing. There must be an amazing creator there. Uh, and so, you know, when we look at the at a at a painting, we go, "Wow, that thing's amazing!" And then it makes us want to give worth to the painter. That's right, the painter. We go, man, that is an amazing piece of art. And we look at who created it, and we go, that is amazing. We give a worth and value to that person's creation. And this is how we can live our life. Is not by so, we are going to worship no matter what, 
there's no human being on the planet who says, hey, I cannot n- not worship anything. You're going to worship something. But ha- what can help our minds is to be able to go, you know what, learn about God and go, wow, and start learning to adore and start learning to be thrilled by and learn how to go, man, dude, that was off the charts amazing. And, you know, the message that Jesus came to bring is amazing that he is from the Father, that he has come to reveal the Father. And he said, no greater love than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. He's come to lay down his life for you and for me to do this radical, unique, uh, not normal thing for you to make a way for you and me to dwell with his father we need that forgiveness and jesus has come to do something extraordinaire something unique someone no one else can do and that's why he is worth all the glory because you know someone might put something in the net and it might be glorifying and we might all praise that person Someone might take a shot and we go, whoa, that was an amazing shot. And they win the game and it's all over. But, you know, someone's going to hit a a buzzer beater once again. There will be things that will happen again. Maybe not in the same way, but very similar. But the Bible says that what God did for us is one of a kind. And, man, that is amazing. So not unto us, but to your name be the glory. Now, the reason why we think of God and and we go, we want to glorify his name above our name is because of his faithfulness. He is so faithful to us, even when we don't deserve uh, him to be faithful with us. We don't aren't doing the right thing. He is still faithful. See, we can glorify him because he is gracious. He is merciful and he is uniquely gracious and uniquely merciful and that is amazing and so there's a lot to really adore and um, be excited about when it comes to God hey hope you guys enjoyed this little chapel time you guys have a great day bye-bye